So, um, Ed, kind of explain what you believe the highlights to have been, uh, you know, from this press conference. I mean, we've been we've been discussing a few things, but um, you were there, and you could also hear the tenor of the questions and um, the responses. Well, I think a couple things. You've got the, the investigative questions, which is clearly very much on the minds of many people here in the Odessa Midland area, and then uh, the political aspect. Let, let me get to that later. We'll get to the investigative stuff um, here off the top. I think what is significant is that here uh, in, in the coming, uh, with, with, within the next couple of hours, I feel rather confident to say that uh, local police here will officially identify uh, the suspect in this case, who's been simply described as a white male in his mid-30s, but uh, the police chief told me after the press conference that uh, that name is forthcoming. So um, the police chief um, uh, did not want to say his name in a, in a venue, in, in, a, in a press conference. Um, that, that is something that is has quite uh, gathered a, a great deal of momentum in these in these uh, mass shootings where uh, people don't want to bring more undue attention that is absolutely necessary uh, to the cowards that bring out, carry out these types of attacks. So that is understandable, but I think we'll get that name shortly. Um, and also, I think what is significant is uh, that this is a suspect that lives here in Ector County. Odessa sits in Ector County, uh, and the FBI uh, agent uh, confirmed uh, that FBI agents are carrying out a search warrant uh, in the western part of the city here in Ector, in Ector County. So we presume that these uh, search warrants are now being carried out uh, where the suspect lived or worked or whatever the case uh, might be. But uh, I, I think from an investigative standpoint, that is rather significant, especially when you consider the vastness of this, these crime scenes that they're dealing with. The FBI agent said that there are more than 15 different crime scenes scattered across the country. You have victims that were killed at several different locations. So this is very different from from any other type of mass shooting situation where usually it's all contained in one area and one location um, and obviously as gruesome and as horrible as all those others have been this is a, a bit of a different cha challenge as far as the political questions I think the, the real significant thing was uh, the exchange where the governor of Texas who uh, stood there and, and talked about being tired of people dying uh, that the status quo is unacceptable that action is needed that when he was asked point-blank if he thought AR uh, assault style rifle weapons uh, as the one that was used in this attack again, whether or not those uh, firearms should be outlawed, he simply refused and danced around the question multiple times. I think from, from what he said, that was the standpoint. Although he did at one point in a very poignant moment of the press conference, read a text from the mother of the 17-month-old girl who was wounded in this attack, suffering injuries to her mouth and, and face. Uh, the governor read a text from the child's mother, and this is what she said. This is all of our worst nightmare, but thank God she's alive and relatively well. She goes on to say that toddlers are funny because they can get shot but still want to run around and play. She says that we are thanking God for that. Her mouth is pretty bad, but will heal and can be fixed. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like her jaw was hit, just lip, teeth, and tongue. She is having surgery tomorrow to remove the shrapnel from her chest And Frederica, I think one of the things to kind of point out here at the end is I was rather uh, taken aback by uh, Special Agent Christopher Combs. He's the FBI agent, the lead agent here in charge. You might have heard him at one point talking about uh, we will be ready for the next one. These types of shootings are happening every two weeks in the United States of America right now. Um, I, I, I've seen Agent Combs from, from time to time at a lot of these shootings. Um, he definitely son sounded much more exasperated and frustrated than I have e ever seen him. So I thought that was uh, r rather rather a, a, a poignant moment and obviously one of the more subtle moments of the press conference. But I, I, I thought that stood out to me rather significantly as well.
Indeed. All right. I love Dara. Thank you so much. I want to bring back Josh and, and Julie at and, you know, something else the, the police chief said, you know, he said when describing um, the the shooter. And again, there's still a whole lot of questions about the shooter, the sequence of events, etc. He said, you know, this is a different type of active shooter because he was mobile. So, Julia, what more do you want to learn about this investigation? Because it is ongoing, even though the gunman is right. dead. Um, again, Ed said they're going to be, you know, searching his residence. Perhaps there's a digital footprint to get more answers. But what is it that you want to hear about this investigation? So in some ways, it's just a really odd time because I do think that that press conference could have really sort of set us on a path to where this is going. I think most people are leaving that press conference more confused than not. Uh, the failure to mention which kind of rifle it is or even the uh, suspect's name uh, is just going to, you know, your goal as a public official is to calm the waters, to give facts out. Um, so I think that there'll be an investigation. His name will be released. There's no question about that. We just, they, you know, they just had a global audience with a press conference being uh, live and they fail to mention the name. And so I think that there's just going to be an investigation into who he is and what his potential motivation is, whether it's, even if it's not uh, tied to any uh, terrorist organization, was there an ideology animating it? Were there drugs? It's worth mentioning that or other things that sort of got him into uh, a, an increased state. I want to just say one thing that Ed said, and I, I think it's important. This is a debate. I obviously have strong feelings about it, about what public officials' duty is, about the disclosure of names. I, I'm quite confident that if his name was Muhammad Atta, that name would have been disclosed. And I do not think in this time that white male killers get the privilege of anonymity. And I think it's important that we get the name out, as long as his family's safe, as long as there's no risk to public safety, mm. uh, in a public forum. Let the media determine his notoriety or not. Uh, but I just, it's, it's just a weird turn of events. And I'm, I'm obviously, I think it's just wrong for public officials to, in some ways, um, infantilize the public. Um, and I, I feel like I felt the left that pre press conference feeling that way, both mm. between the rifle and the name. Josh. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that there's a great investigative value for law enforcement in getting that name out as well. In any investigation, you're trying to balance what is sensitive, what do we want to protect with what, what we actually want to get out there, both from a public information standpoint, but also these are now a potential, you know, assist people that are going to assist with this investigation as you crowdsource. You get the name out. If people know about this person or know about others who may be associated with him, uh, that's something that can be really of great use to investigators as they try to get into the mindset, especially with the person now deceased. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Um, Josh Campbell, Juliet Kayam, and Ed Lavendera, thank you so much to all of you. Appreciate it.